So it's quite unique what we're looking at here. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what we call the Lally Vector system. This is our kitchen. I suppose there's three elements to it. We have our vector, which is what most people call the diet feeder. We have our crane then that runs on the two girders and then our feed grabber. So a feed grabber is basically a shear grab. So this system here feeds cows 24 hours a day, 365. It's not like a normal diet feeder maybe in a cow house, get fed twice a day. This machine feeds them whilst also pushing them in. So we have, we have several different feedstuffs. So we have our silage, our whole crop, our maize and our beet and straw. Straw only goes to the dry cows, but uh, we have no worry about you know amounts. Just keep this, keep this kitchen filled, and the vector do the work. It's a, it's a pretty simple system for such a complex machine. Mm. The vector works. He runs off your uh, metal Sorry. plates on the ground, yes. yes, and then he bounces off the barriers. So he has two routes on this farm: route one, cow house; route two, dry cow house. Okay. So uh, all we have to do is program the amount of silage that every cow should get and that's all using the Lally Horizon system. Okay. So the, through the Lally you know exactly how many cows is in which shed so you're always getting that accuracy you know there's no room for man-made error. All is done by the machine we don't have to worry about it and then we work closely with a nutritionist Lyle Hamilton Farmgate Nutrition and he would kind of tweak the diet from his own home he can do all logging in and then that leaves it that, right, if a cow's dipping maybe slightly on fats, what do we need to do here? Do we need to change our meal or do we need to, you know, up the protein of the meal or whatever? So it yeah. works out good. So like, what's it grabbing there now and what's it bringing in? So that there's straw. So this means uh, once you see it grabbing straw, you know it's going to feed the dry cows. Right. So the dry cow ration would mainly consist of the whole crop oats, the straw and the silage. Whereas the cows then, there's no straw at all because we'd be pretty happy with their consistency. Uh, the cows are getting eight kilos of whole crop, eight of sugar beet, and eight of maize, and then 32 of silage, and three and a half of blend. And molasses then just to bind everything together, because the more we can get in the cows, the better. Yeah. But uh, we'd be very happy with the Lely Vector now. I think, personally speaking, most indoor farms, I'd say, will have them. Maybe 10 years down the line, but definitely I think there are, there's a big scope for them in this country. Yeah. I, I can't really understand how there's not more of them already, but without a doubt now they are, they are the future. It's no different than probably the, the Lally robots for milking the cows. You know, 10 years ago, a lot of men had said they'll never come in or whatever, but you know, 10 years later, there's probably six or 700 of them in the country. Yes. So yes. just shows how times can move on. So just on the daily routine then about putting yep. in the feed, so is it a daily routine you're putting feed in no. or is it every other day? No, or? so typically, the silage will be used more often than everything else, but typically, maybe every third day, you'd spend maybe three hours just fill it full. On a Friday evening, you fill it full, put as many blocks as you can, that'll do you the Monday evening. So you haven't, you know, you're not worrying about who's gonna do it at the weekend, or you're not worried about anything about that. And then, as a daily routine, basically all you'll be doing, go up, check your report, is the vector feeding a consistent amount of each feed stuff, and then just tidy up your blocks. So. The system works in blocks. So you have a block designated for each feedstuff. Yeah. So we have two rows of blocks for silage and then your row of block for maize and whole crop and so on. So you have to make sure your blocks are perfectly in the square. Okay. Daily routine then, get a grape, any loose stuff, put it in a square and then you prefer it. So what preferring means is tell the grabber to get that block straight away. Okay. Yeah, so it works out good and then our grabber, you can design it that it'll try the silage, say, twice, three times, four times. The number of chances it gets to grab it, the higher accuracy you'll get. So if we have it grabbing the silage once, it's going to end up just grabbing a big clump. Which it did there. Yeah. That's the second it, right it, there. No, I think yeah, it, it would have tried it until it gets the desi desired weight. Okay. So we have the silage at three. So she'll get three chances to get a right weight. If it gets the right weight within one grab, it'll go. Okay. So probably if you go one chance, it'll save time, but three chances then you're increasing accuracy. It might increase your time, but it's not, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really worth it. Okay. You know, and then she she's constantly mixing while you're loading, and then we have it on a six minute post mix. So basically when all the ingredients is in it, it'll mix then for six minutes.
Okay. So what feed stuffs are coming in there? That's right. So the, the orange pipe you see there, that's molasses. Yeah. So roughly they're getting half a kilo each a day. Then the grey pipe then is your blend. So I think it's a 16% protein. That there is given at three and a half kilos per head per day. So that goes on whenever all your forages is put in. So then it mixes right. And then in a hopper then towards the back, we just have stuff from Farm Get Nutrition. It's just like a buffer. Yeah. A few cows throwing their cod and we just want to, you know, lower the acidity of the cow's stomach. So okay. there's no you know, you can put as many things into the vector as you want. Yeah. That that's probably the beauty of it. You know, you're not limited in what you can do. And that's a shield then of sorts. Then, that's a shield. Basically, if a, bit, if a bit dropped, then you can scrape it in. Because okay. otherwise you'd have stuff lying everywhere and it might stop the vector from getting in and charging because when he's loading, he's always charging. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So when it moves in, it's following this track. So it moves right? basically, if it's on route one or route two, it still goes up this track. When it's going, it'll either push in the feed or it'll, it'll feed at fence one or two. So fence one is the first two barriers. Yeah. Fence two is the second two, and then fence three is one buyer this side and one buyer that side. So every 40 minutes, the vector does a scan, so it can scan the height of the silage. Once the desired height is not met, it knows, right, fence one, I need to feed here. And then if it goes to route two, it's still pushing this silage in. So cow's silage has been pushed in every 40 minutes. So you're having to worry, has cows got food now? They have food 24 hours a day. Yeah. And as you can see, like there's a lot of cows lying. So you have no big demand at yeah, the feed fence at any one time. time. Yeah. Like you have no heifer that's getting bullied, not getting any uh, any feed. Why the angle track here then? So the angle track there, that's just for him coming back in. He can... Uh, he gets back in line? Yeah, gets yeah. back in line. And if he's pushed out by the silage running. Okay. And that's because this is his return. So he has to follow that there to straighten himself up and come back in. Yes. You'd see it maybe later on yeah. if you serve it Fine. But uh, no, it, wor it works pretty good. As you can see, like the stuff's... Like that's wagon silage and it's fairly well chopped. Yeah. You know, there's dam all around with that and then you can see your blend and stuff, so. Does it, a bit of length in the silage help the, the you know, with, from a With wagon, the grab? Probably does. A wagon type silage. It probably does and it doesn't because the longer you have, maybe the harder it is to, to get the right it. weight. Okay, true. Here, probably, the wagon's probably not desired in this country, but it works for us. You know, as long as you can keep the silage consistent for the cows, I can't see any problem with yeah. it. So gates here then, before we leave this area, yeah. you have a lot of gates there, why are they there? Right, so these gates here are basically safety. Yeah. So if you were to open a gate right now, your vector throw on a red, a red light, that's basically an alarm, safety fence open. Yeah. yeah. So green means go. You can't go in there whilst that's loading. To go in there and say fill the kitchen or do anything to it, you have to press your pause button and wait for the grabber to reset again the back wall. The green light will flash and then that means basically you're allowed to walk away. It's just, if you're in there and you're in a block, it'll think you're silage and try grab you, so yeah. you're safer off not in there if you can. You shouldn't really, should always be paused. So, uh, Technology's no. come a long way. Technology's come a long way. You know. Like say 10 years ago, yeah. there wouldn't have been, even. well even before I started in this farm, I'd have seen very little of these. Yeah. I'd have said, yeah. oh these are only in European countries, yeah. you know, it'll never be in Ireland. But Compared now, to 50, 100 years ago, the hardship people had feeding animals yeah. in the winter. With a, with yeah. a grape, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. it's definitely, like it, it's increased, it increases production here too because the cows are more silent and it just makes sense. Yes. Cows have always access to food. Yeah. It's always fresh. Like we'd have very little waste of silage now. Like I'd say, if you'd have 20 kilos a week maybe, that'd be it. It just, it, it saves a lot of labor too. Like you take about it maybe six, seven hours a week, fill in your kitchen. It'd probably take you two or three hours a day day feeding anyway, and that's without pushing your silage in. You have no worry about it. Yeah. Now, obviously, you have to know how to work the system. There's no point in you fiddling about on the computer. All is work by horizon. You have to know what you're at. It's only as good as the man who's managing yeah, it's it. It's like or anything. Woman. Yeah, it's like anything. So as it's filling here, we'll just have a look at your yeah. block cutter. It's yeah. a oh, yeah. serious piece of kit here too. Big, big pit of kit, yeah. So uh, ideally, the bigger the block of silage you can get in there, the better. So we have to use that. If you use loose silage, the stuff that was used maybe in the third day might go off. Whereas if it's in the block, then it's not going to go off. It's basically like being in a pit. Yeah. So you just have knives that cut, your bar drops down and it cuts a nice square block. And when you're in the kitchen, then 
your ram just shoves it out and your loader just okay, wheels so you're, back. You're not tipping it out. Not such. tipping it it's out. forcing it out. You don't yeah. want that block to yeah. flip over. Keeps its structure. Yeah, yeah. And so these, these knives then are moving on the, uh, they're the moving, outsides. They're like they're, uh, recipient or yeah. knives. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're just the job. outside ones. They're just a cutting bar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Driven by two rams. Yeah. And are you forcing the ram, or is it, is, is it just are you turning it's, a lever to keep the? It's just a button. Yeah. yeah. And that's all it is. She's just moving, just over and back, over and back. So it's different than a shear grab, like, but we, she's a deadly bit of kit. It leaves, if you just want to look at the side, it leaves a very yeah. clean finish. Yeah, we can. And so what weight would the block come out of? I don't, I, I, well, don't, yeah. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. It'd be heavy anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dense block. It'd be far heavier than the bale. It'd probably yeah. be the weight of two bales. Okay. Know. Depends on the height of your silage and everything, you know. So the site itself is probably in a race site and we're walking down now? Yeah, we're walking down. So basically anywhere there is a tank. And then the lads are just getting a bit of a calf house ready. Yeah. So we bought two igloos there and give us a wee bit more space. So you can see there. Really impressive. Ah, oh, yeah. Like it's as clean as you can get. Yeah. You know, you're having to worry about silage falling or anything. So are you taking out of this at the moment? Taking out of this. So yeah. this is first cut. So we had two pits of first cut. This is our second uh, pit of it. We just made sure everything was rolled. Very little waste. You had a wee bit along the wall. Stuff's testing, I think. 72 percent or 72 dmd and maybe i think it is 20 dry matter or something 22 it was quite wet we mm. put it in the week before the real good weather we yeah. would we wouldn't get silage in here maybe the same as cork farmers and mm. you know down the country you have to the ground the the ground has to suit okay are you going to take dictates. in muck yeah yeah so Definitely. What, what covers on it then so we just put a normal roll of um black cover with green netting and then just them tires yeah the hearts have a lorry comp a lorry business here so any amount of tires yes. cut them in half very handy to move very handy to use and then we go with easy fix mats then along the walls plenty of weight okay as long as you have plenty of weight yeah we can't we can't really complain yeah that's just then the other first cut pit there uh, we have a bit of dung and stuff in it just to keep it and then we have our maze in this small pit you need a you need a smaller pit face with the maze not otherwise yeah. you're not using it'll enough bit will go off yeah yeah so how far does your maze come from uh, it came from Kilkenny this year okay so we originally had thought we Tommy took uh, took 100 acres of good ground there about 15 minutes away 60 acres of it was planted at whole crop but he wanted to try, try and juice, uh, increase his uh, fats and proteins so he went for a pit of maize anyway so mm. been feeding that about six weeks or so okay. and we've seen our fats has probably jumped from just under four to four point two or so. Okay. so yeah. It has it has now done its job and the liters has increased probably maybe two liters of cow, give or take. Okay. With a fresher cow's calf and it's hard to judge, you know. Just on your equipment and stuff in the yep. farm, supporting the farm. So what are we looking at here? So everything, all machinery work here is done on farm. Yeah. But the machinery will be there maybe kind of from the peat business and then to lower the costs on the farm business because Tommy has full time staff so he needs work here all the time. So they have Beet chopper buckets, uh, shear grabs for the other off farms for the young cattle. Yeah. This here, larger bucket then, that's for like spreading the peat on our cubicles. Yeah. It's just basically a bedding bucket. Yeah. Great job. Road brush. We this have, here? That's your beet chopper. Yeah. So typically now that there fills your kitchen then. That's so all you we buy have. your clean beet as such? Clean beet, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Where that, that comes come from? from RD. Okay. I don't know who, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, Again, with the lorry business, Aidan and Tommy just send the lorry driver out to get a load and yeah. that keeps you going for they another way. Yeah. It's easy. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. And then we have our other Sorry. tree silage pits and that's that's our whole crop weight. Yeah. That's all spring stuff. We didn't get the, the ground was at least in time, you know, to do the winter. Yeah. But we have winter crop uh, sowed there at the minute and then we have a good pit of second cut here and then another pit then is the winter oats is what, or the spring oats is what okay. we're using at the minute right so you're running new hollands then all new hollands yeah uh, well he has a he has a 6280 on the pipe system he's his own pipe system as yeah. well okay so it does all the slurry like you'd have all the slurry out here in two days three okay. days yeah kevin kind of looks after that and yeah always done right then. and you're doing your own silage everything's own Cry. silage he's his own mower yeah. his own rake all crone yeah Bought at Erwin's, he has his own uh, wagon, buck rake. Yeah, what um, make a wagon? He has crone as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He buy, Erwin's only 15 minutes across or away and they're, they're very handy, got high and anything that's wrong. Good service. Ah, oh. well, from what I see, as I said, I'm only here a year and a bit, so. Yeah. From what I've seen, nothing's ever an issue. Yeah. What's this door here? So just 
we have an underground water tank, so yes. anything that come, any rainwater, anything, there's a tank in here. And then that supplies basically all the volume hoses. Yeah. We need to wash down the yard, wash Good. down, power washing. There you go. It suited the level, so on the suited side. Suited the level, yeah. 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 It's a big thing too on dairy farms now, you know, you have to keep the place clean. Yeah, and we have plenty of water anywhere clean, don't no, we? Oh, we way, so. definitely a lot of water between the last week anyway. Yeah, make use of it. Oh, yeah. And then it's a good, it's a good open shed. You know, there's no cobwebs or dam all in that. Yeah. Cow Don't shed, which is a big there. one. Yeah. With a very little, you know, air problems running. Cool. So it works out pretty good. And then this is just an extra fence. Just an extra fence, give a wee bit more feed capacity just for the cows. So yeah. You can turn that off if you want. Flick of a button on the horizon. I know, so. but with the angles, it suited, didn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's on the return trip anyway for the vector, so it doesn't increase time. Yeah. So she and she's moving now, she's heading off to feed. Yeah, so basically your route one, your milking cows, that there will go every 40 minutes. So if it's not feeding, it's what it's doing what we call a scan. So a scan is checking the height of your silage. If it goes below the desired height, it knows, okay, fence one or fence two needs a different, needs more. So it'll just top it up then all the time. So she's gonna go now, it is full. She's gonna push in the silage. It's gonna go to her fence that it needs to feed and basically dish out the silage just like a normal diet feeder. Whilst it's doing that then, it's scanning the other cow it's scanning the other fences, so it's never really doing an empty route. And then we have dry cows over on the far side, so it's checking their silage as well. Obviously it can't feed the two rations at once. But so she'll speed up now and the thing that's pushing it in is what we call a skirt. So the skirt just basically moves on a bearing, pushing the silage in all the time, every 40 minutes and then every 60 minutes to the dry cows. So the cows are never without silage. It'll stop then at the fence it needs to feed. Your door will open and then it'll it'll put out silage. So it could yeah. be stopping here now. No, maybe not. And the cows know when it's coming, so they'll maybe look for a wee bit of fresher stuff. But there's bars on the side of the vector that'll kind of stop them from going. And if something goes in the way of the vector, then it'll push the bumper and stop the vector for a minute so it'll not drive on. And then if you have any vehicles or anything parked beside the strips, say the milk tank or anything, hit pause button or the milk tank driver knows at this stage, hit the pause button and you should have no issues. But you're not going to get any other system there that's going to give as fresh a silage all the time to the cows. Like you look, on a normal farm there, you'd have the full barriers when the day feeder would be there. You have what, 10? 12 and like look at the amount of cows and the sliding down. Eating, yeah. The kind of, down. Yeah, that speaks for itself, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then it has different actions, so if it needs to go to the right, you program the different action, follows the strips, and then it'll either turn left or right depending on the route. Okay. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. And then when it's turning it'll beep so if there's anyone beside it or anything, they know right I need to move here. 